Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. Happy New Year! From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, send it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Become one of our friends over on Facebook, facebook.greatdetectives.net. And follow us over on Twitter at Radio Detectives. Before we do get started, I have a little brief uh, message. As the new year starts, folks are taking stock of their financial situations, and in some cases, realizing that uh, we need a more uh, frugal new year. Well, that's one reason why we're pleased to offer the entertainment book. It's a great book full of discounts to local merchants, as well as some national uh, merchants as well. You can learn more, find out what merchants are in the entertainment book, including dining, dry cleaning, groceries, and many other things you, uh, you do anyway. Go to entertainment.greatdetectives.net to learn more about the books uh, in your area, and they're now available at reduced prices. So check that out. Well, this is our last uh, adventure with the Thin Man, uh, and this one is a little bit different. It is the adventure of the haunted hams uh, here on the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. <laughs> No, Nicky, darling, that's not it. It isn't, Nora? No, it goes like this. Thirty-three fine brews blended into one great beer. Pabst Blue Ribbon Beer presents The New Adventures of the Thin Man with Nick and Nora Charles, the happiest, merriest married couple in radio. Tonight and every Tuesday night at this same time, that international favorite Pabst Blue Ribbon Beer proudly presents the finest in summertime entertainment. So, sit back, relax, and pour yourself a tall, foaming glass full of blended, splendid Pabst Blue Ribbon. While you listen to the stars of our show, Claudia Morgan as Nora and Les Tremaine as Nick, in tonight's adventure of The Thin Man entitled The Haunted Ham. <laughs> Every once in a while, a man's wife gets the idea that her husband needs a change. Of course, the conscientious little homemaker never suggests that her husband change his wife. Well, this evening, we find the great ex-detective, Nick Charles, in a car with his lovely wife, Nora, and his good friend, Ebenezer Williams, driving through the countryside. Nicky, look at that moon come up over those trees. Can you see anything as beautiful as that in the city? Yes. Oh, name it. The moon over the polo grounds as the Giants and the Dodgers play a night game. That just shows how badly you needed this change, doesn't it, Ed? Yes, I reckon so. You've been working too hard, Nick. Me? Working? Yes. you got to get your nose out of that grindstone. Ed, you, my partner, can say a thing like that? Yeah. I just get my nose out of the grindstone, too. That grindstone's becoming crowded with noses. Nora, the only thing we've had our noses in were comic books and detective stories. That's right. Detective stories, comical books, comical books, detective stories. We was in a rut. And you think we'll get out of it by going up to your farm, Ed? Why, of course. It's about time we changed ruts. <laughs> Ed. Huh? Ed, listen, there's a fire engine coming up behind you. Oh, better pull over. I used to be a volunteer fireman around here in the days when I was sheriff. Here comes the engine, Ed. Yeah. Well, say, that's my old friend, Newt, the fire chief. Ed, he's stopping. Yeah. Howdy, Newt. Howdy, Ed. I thought that was you driving the car, and I stopped just to make sure. That's you, all right. Reckon ain't nobody else. Well, I'm awful glad to see you back, Ed. Well, I'm glad to be back, Newt. Oh, this is my friend, Nick and Nori Charles. Howdy, folks. It's... Nice to know you. Are you going to or coming from a fire, Mr. Newton? Uh, going to, of course. Say, Eb, did you hear that Shad Simmons had a calf with two heads last April? Well, what do you know? Yes, but even with two heads, he ain't no smarter than one with one. Is this a serious fire you're going to, Newt? Well, I can't tell I get there, my friend. Say, Eb, uh, did you hear about Methuselah Marbrain? Don't tell me that he finally married Belle May Bogardus. 
Well, they set the wedding for September, but they postponed it. Again? Yeah, oh dear. After him being engaged to her for 15 years? Well, they had a good reason. They figured they'd wait till they was better acquainted. They didn't want to be hasty. No. Marry in haste, repent. And lose, uh, yes. Who's why are you going to, Newt? Well, I'm awful glad you remind me of that, Eb, now. Silas Salem, he's got a fire tonight. Uh, would you like to come along and help? Well, yes, I reckon so. Well, uh, just let me get there first. That's all I request. It makes a better impression on the taxpayers. Well, it was a pleasant chat, Eb. I'll see you at the fire. Yeah. I hope you fellas won't put it out before we get there, Newt. Oh, have no fear, Eb. We'll wait for you. All aboard, boys! Let out roar! Does he always dash to a blaze like that, eh? No. Well, he ain't exactly speedy, but we elected him because he was the only one that can play the tubi in the fireman's band. Look, Nick, there's the fire. Yes. And it ain't Silas's house burning tall. It's just his old barn. Well, come on, Ed. Maybe we can rescue some of his livestock. Hurry up, Nora. I am, Nick, but you need me so anxious. Oh, now, don't ruin my fun, baby. Ever since I retired from being a detective, I've been dying to rescue something, even if it's a cow. Hi, Newt. Oh, hi there, Eb. Uh, howdy, folks. How's she burning, Newt? Well, burning pretty good for a barn, Eb. Have you got all the animals out of the barn yet? Oh, yes, yeah, sure, yes. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Had some awful queer-looking animals in there, though. What kind? Well, what you might call the city kind. Dogs? Well, that depends on your point of view. I heard them saying they'd been treated like dogs. Oh, well, they're people. That depends on your point of view, too. <laughs> they're actors. Uh, real honest, goodness, live actors. Where's Silas? Oh, he went back to farmhouse. He said he's got the barn insured, so there ain't nothing to worry about. He's been stabling them live actors because he says there's some kind of summer stock. Oh, you mean they're a summer stock company. Where oh, is that fire chief? Where is he hiding? That must be he over there, Master. Uh, looking for me, Bob? I certainly am. I am the director and producer of this company. I am Greg Noisky. Well, I'm Newt Newton. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Uh, uh, um, what'd you say your first name was? You couldn't pronounce it. Just call me Greg Noisky. Listen, our teeth are burning. Our I'm very to... glad to meet you, Mr. G. This is my friend, Eb Williams. Hey, Mr. Mr. G. Yes. Hello. Master Fire Chief, aren't you Mr. going G, to... Mr. G, Mr. G, I'd like you to meet my friends here, Nick and Nori Charles. Now, how do you do? I'm doing terrible, thank you. Please, about that fire. Ain't you going to introduce us to your lady friend, Mr. G? This is Myra Mannix, our ingenue. Now, please, Pleased aren't to meet you, you Miss Mannix. Cheers, greetings, salutations, and all that sort of rot. Oh, are you British? No, but we're putting on a jolly old British play, you know. Mr. Newton, oh boy, aren't you going to do something about our theatre? It's getting a bit overheated, you know. Oh, uh, what theatre? The bar! We made it into a theater. It's burning. Aren't you going to do anything about the fire? Well, we're watching it, ain't we? Watching it? You're supposed to put it out! He's kind of excitable, ain't he, Eb? Yes, yeah. yes. Well, theatrical people, they got more nerves and voices than any other kind, you know. But the barn will burn to the ground! Don't you want to put it out? Why, of course not. Some of my boys might get hurt in a blaze like that. Besides, you can't put it out. Why not? Nature, my boy, nature. Too much fire and not enough water. But it sure looks awful pretty, don't it? Look at it. Pretty? Oh, I'm going wicky. What, 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 what? Well, what? excuse me, folks. I'd better see to my boys. They're getting awful close to that fire. Don't you think so, Eb? Yes, they might get a blister. Oh, dear. Say, now, look, Eb, you stay here for a little while. You can see none of them actor people interferes with the blaze. And if it begins to spread, you call me. Yeah, sure. You going back to town, Newt? Oh, yes, I think I should. There might be some other fires for us to look at. Well, Nick, he's leaving. Yes. Well, they sure look dashing in those firemen's uniforms. Hey, Ed, how does the siren sound? Great, great, Newt. Sounds just like an opera star. Oh, that's good. It's a brand new one. Well, give him a gun, Willis. Nick Nori, that barn's practically burned to the ground now, so I reckon we can go. All right, Ed. But I wonder what poor Mr. Gnoisky and his actors are going to do without a theater. Ed, you have a nice big barn on your farm, haven't you? Yes, 
But don't say it's so loud. Oh, it's too late. Here comes Gret Noisky and his ingenue, and they've got an opening night gleam in their eyes. Don't depart, Mr. Williams. Wait a moment. Yeah, chums, we've got great plans for you. Silas Salem says you've got a nice large barn. You great, big, mature Gary Cooper man, you. Oh, I'm only human. And such character in his face, like a ripened Gregory Peck. Where do you keep your barn, and how much do you want for it? Well, I don't know, folks. No, I, I wouldn't consider renting it. Not unless my business partner here says I should. Oh? Ah, Nicky Wicky. Did anybody ever tell you you're gorgeous? Yes, my wife. Oh, that doesn't count. With me, it does. I can't make up my mind without her advice. Nora. Gretnoisky. You adore her. But, but, but I do. Would you like to be worshipped? I can make your star overnight. Uh, well, I'm afraid we're not interested. You see, we came up here to get away from all the excitement and insanity of the city. Madame, wouldn't you like to be a great star? Uh, well, every woman would like to be a great actress, but uh, I'm different. Well, if you won't help us, won't you at least listen to our tale of woe? Tell me, have you ever heard of Floyd Fresne? Fresne? Hasn't he something to do with the movie? Why, yes, Nick. He's some sort of big-time agent. He is a movie mogul, and he is backing this company. We are supposed to develop new movie stars, and when he finds out that we have no bar, oh, Myra, we pay them to show them how unhappy we are. You mean no theater, no chance at Hollywood? That's right, Nora. Of course, I despise the coast and the cinema with its pots of gold and lack of artistic standards. But if Floyd Fresne signed you up to go out there... I'd gladly murder my dear grandma to get there. Now, do you understand? We expect to see Floyd Fresne any minute. He was going to come by for a dress rehearsal. Hey, look, Gretnoisky. Isn't that Mr. Fresne's car now? Yes. My think of some brilliant excuse for this catastrophe. Well, shall I tell him that we worked with an ardor so burning that the barn caught fire? Hello there, FF. Greetings, Red Noise King. I have a wonderful explanation why the barn burned down. You've heard of the Chicago fire, no doubt? Heard of it. I saw it. In Technicolor. Colossal. Well, the same thing happened to us. Who would dream that there is a distant relative to Mrs. O'Leary's car? Just a moment. No improvising. Everybody quiet. Who is she? Nora Charles. Come here, child. Uh, Me? Yes. Bear your teeth. There. Do they bite? You want to find out? Uh, No. Then get your hands off my face. Uh, 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 I'm just feeling the bony structure. Hey, what do you think you're doing? Who is he? Her husband. Get rid of him? Listen, Fresne, who do you think you are? Uh, tell me, my man. Uh, does your wife have a figure as good as it looks? What? Well, you ought to know, does she? I certainly have. Gronoisky, this woman has the most photogenic face and figure I've seen in 20 years. She's a new garbo. I want to see her give a performance in two weeks. Two weeks, mind you. Find another barn. I'll pay all the bills. Adios. Uh, adios, F.F. Nora, this is the opportunity of a lifetime. Yeah, and you'll be able to give us all a break. Well, really, I... Think of it. Your name in life. Platinum swimming pool. Sable underwear. Do you think I'm a foolish, silly girl like all the other girls in the world? Yes. You're patriotic, aren't you? I certainly am. Then think of this. Your income taxes alone will make the government rich. Uh, Mr. Gretnoisky, I'd love to help you and your friends, but... If you think I ever had any ambitions to be an actress, adored by the world, thrilling audiences, having my name and picture in the papers, just being too, too wonderful, you're absolutely right. Ev, how soon can we get the cattle out of your barn? You are listening to the new adventures of the Thin Man, presented for your summertime entertainment by the makers of that international favorite, Pabst Blue Ribbon Beer. Say, Mr. Orchestra Leader, would you mind blowing that little pitch pipe of yours? Thank you. Now, again, please. And again. That's right. No matter how many times you sound that same note, it's always exactly alike. Just as every bottle, every glass, every taste of Pabst Blue Ribbon beer is always exactly alike, no matter where or when you buy it. The reason for that fresh, clean, sparkling taste, that perfect uniformity, 
goes back to the little tune Nicky was strumming on the piano at the beginning of this program. Thirty-three fine brews blended into one great beer. Just think, every glass, Every drop of Pabst Blue Ribbon beer contains never less than 33 fine brews. So be sure there's plenty of blended, splendid Pabst Blue Ribbon cooling in your refrigerator, ready to serve to those unexpected guests when they drop in on a summer evening. And now for Act Two of tonight's Thin Man Adventure. Two weeks have passed since Nora was bitten by the acting bug, and we find her now studying her part in the play that the great Russian director, Gred Norsky, and his actors are going to put on in Ebb Williams' barn. But I do think you're terribly, irresistibly smushing, Lord Cornish, simple Berry. A gay laugh. (laughs) You think that last ha was a trifle phony, Nick? I think the whole thing's phony. Oh, well, you're just saying that because Gred Noisky only gave you a small part and I'm playing the lead. Nora, do you really want to become a movie star? Do you think I'd be acting this silly if I didn't? But, darling, despite Floyd Fresnay, you, you just can't be a star overnight. Gred Noisky thinks I can, and he knows much more about it than you do, dear. And don't talk to me this way. You, you get me out of the mood. <clears throat> Uh, <laughs> oh, how's that? Sounds like a coloratura soprano gargling with Drano. Nicky, how dare you say a thing like that to me? We're opening tonight. Now, 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 Nora, don't get temperamental again. Well, I've got to be temperamental. Every star's temperamental. And I'm furious with you. Give me something to smash. Here, here, here. I collected some old glasses that Ebb doesn't need. He says they're good for smashing. Thank you. That's better. Now, <clears throat> But I do think you're terribly, irresistibly smushing, Lord Cornish. Simple, very <laughs> gay laugh. I'll do it. <laughs> ah. Nicky, don't you want me to be a movie star? Well, darling, frankly, no. Why not? Why, I, I hardly ever see you anymore. Oh, well, naturally, my career, you know. But, baby, you dragged me up here to take care of me. I, I'm being neglected. You know what happens to neglected wives. Well, you're not a wife, you're a husband. Don't you know anything, Nicky? Well, you know what happens to neglected husbands. The same thing as happens to neglected wives. Oh, don't be silly, dear. <clears throat> oh. Will you stop that laughing, please? Nicky, behave yourself or I'll get temperamental again. Now, listen, baby, I don't think you should go on with this. I knew it. You're jealous because I've got a career. Okay. I'm jealous. Well, darling, I let you have a career as a detective for years, and now... You won't let me become a movie star. Is that fair? No, darling. Well, then why do you want me to give it up? Because... Because... Don't you think I'm any good? Frankly? Frankly. Frankly, no. I said it, and I'm glad. Give me a glass, please, Nicky. Here, dear. Get rid of your disappointment. Hey, don't aim at my head. Nora, cut it out. I, I changed my mind. You're great. I knew you'd alter your opinion. Oh, uh, enter. I mean, I'm decent. Sorry, Nori. You're wanted on stage for rehearsal. And guess what? Hmm? One of the actors just quit, and Mr. G, he gave me a part, too. I'm going to be Duke Lucyfoot Grenadier. Mr. G thinks I've got a lot of plain, common, ordinary nobility. Mr. G is a genius at discovering talent. Yeah. And, Nick, if you think I'm no good... Just watch what happens at this dress rehearsal. <clears throat> but I do think you're terribly, irresistibly smushing, Lord Cornish. A simple Berry? Gay laugh. <laughs> All right, Nora. We will take the big jealousy scene between you and Myra. Now remember... Nikolaus is your latest flame who doesn't burn hot enough. And Ebenezer is your philosophical advisor who hates you and loves you both together. Who said that? Nobody, Mr. G. That's just one of my ducks. I wish I were sure of that. It sounded like someone was whispering Russian insults in a loud voice. Hear that? I taught the duck to talk Russian. Well, that explains it. Come on, on with the scene. So... You dare enter my home, Penelope. Yes, 
Lady Chattelittle, to claim that which is rightfully me, a uh, mine. Duke Lucyfoot Grenadier, you have never given me bad advice. What shall I do, my dear Duke? Ivan Yezel, do you have a cold? No, no, that's just my cow peeking in the door. Oh, he would make a wonderful actor. Beautiful voice. Proceed. Throw the little scamp out in the gutter. From whence she rose, my dear, dear Lady Chattel the Thorpe. Lady Chattel the Thorpe. Yes, Colonel Biscay Rendango. I can bear it no longer. Won't you call me Rumpy Dumpy as you did when we romped in the castle together in our childhood? I will never call you Rumpy Dumpy again. That is all part of our hideous past. Colonel Biscay Rendango. I deny that. To me, you will always be Princess Bunny Gunny, the golden-haired girl who taught me about life under the castle moat. Uh, what did you say, good noisy? Nothing. It was the ghost out there. Oh, that's funny. He sounded just like you. I have a more beautiful voice than that miserable ghost. Oh, yeah, Mr. G. Let me tell you, that's one of the finest goats in Crabtree County. Uh, uh, I bet you can't make a noise as fine as that. I certainly can. <laughs> the goat sounds better. Myra, are you turning against me too? Can I help it if the goat has a lovely vocal organ? Will you stop this? The curtain goes up in two hours, and I'm forced to talk to Nanny Goat. <laughs> Shut up! Speak! <clears throat> Lady Chattel Little, you are cruel beyond words. And I don't care what happens to me, even if I pay for this with my life. Oh, there. Oh! No, no, no. That's no way to scream when you're shot. But I was trying to do it with a British accent. Hi, Krednoisky. We'll show you how to make screams with an English accent. Like this. Ah! You see? You must scream like a lady. Ah! Ah! No! Ah! Oh! 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 With passion. That's better. That that was the rooster. Oh, you 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 think I'm terrible, don't you? You think I can't act as well as as, as that rooster? I I didn't say that. Well, you you're not much better than that nanny goat. But why do you let those animals come in here and upset me? I I hate you all. Nora, Nora, darling, come back here. Don't have to do more yourself. I'll eat you someday. Nora, darling, let me into your dressing room. Please, baby, I've got to talk to you. Nikki, hasn't she come out of there yet? No, Myra, I've been trying to get in ever since she ran out of the dress rehearsal, but she won't open the door. When's the curtain? In just a few minutes, and the people are coming in now. Floyd Fresnay is out there. Oh, the little scamp. Out into the gutter from whence she rose, dear. Dear Lady Chattel the Thorpe. Business. Hi, Nick. How's Nori? She still won't talk to me. Eb, if she won't let me see her, I won't be able to go on either. Well, me too. I can't go on with these nervous upsets. How can they expect me to give a performance? You've got nerves too? Yes, I have. I never had them until I become an actor, though. Oh, how can she face those people with no confidence in herself? And I help destroy her confidence. Nora, Nora, darling, open the door. Hey, look, she's turning the handle. The door is opening. Good evening, fellow players. If you wish to see me, enter. Nora, darling. I just want you to know, Nicholas, that despite your cruel and heartless discouragement, I shall give a performance that will make people's hair stand up. And no one will ever know that I'll be acting with an aching, breaking heart. You will, Nora? I will, Ebenezer. Oh, gee... You're a great trooper, Nora. Thank you, my little dear. And Nicky, sit on that chair. Okay, but why? So that I can get on your lap like this. Myra, what's the idea? Yes, this is indeed unusual behavior, even for an ingenue. I'm doing it so that he can spank me easier. Nora, it was I who ruined all your rehearsals. I put food near the theater to make the animals come in the barn. I did it to ruin your career. Oh. Professional jealousy. And I greased the outside of your dressing room hoping that you'd break your legs. Oh, I've been awful. 
because I studied your part and I wanted to play it and go to Hollywood and live in a mink-lined swimming pool. Now spank me, Nicky. It will be a pleasure. Ah, thank you. You don't have to enjoy it that much, Nick. Two minutes and the curtain goes up, Nori. The house is sold out. Good luck. Well, Nori, we all want you to go out there and show them people what you can do. Uh, the... There are people out there? Real? Live people? Hundreds of them. Oh. Oh, Nick, catch me. I think I'm dying. Well, Nora, I'm encumbered. I got it. Oh, oh, thank you, Ed. Myra. Myra, thank heavens you told me you know my part. For heaven's sake, go out there and play it. What? My dear child, I am going to sacrifice my career for yours. Anyone who wants to live in a mink blind swimming pool as much as you do, deserves to. Yippee! Give me your costumes, Nora. I gotta change. I'll send you a free autograph from Hollywood. Oh! What happened, Myra? Did you break your little neck? No, I slipped on the grease I put there to break your leg. Nora, darling, I think this is wonderful of you. What made you do it? I'll tell you after the show, but, uh... <clears throat> that's all part of our hideous past. The Colonel, the gay, a randango. <laughs> Well, I can just imagine Nora telling Nick all about it after the show over a sparkling glass of Pabst Blue Ribbon, the beer that's blended from never less than 33 fine brews. There's nothing quite so refreshing on a hot summer night as a cold bottle of Pabst Blue Ribbon and a bowl of salty pretzels or a plate of crackers spread with some nippy cheddar cheese. You know, not only Nicky and Nora, but many stars of the radio, the stage, and movies enjoy Pabst Blue Ribbon beer in their homes. For instance, Gregory Peck, after a busy day on the studio set, likes to head for his ice box and a tall, foaming glass of Pabst Blue Ribbon. Wherever you go, from Hollywood to Honolulu, from Philadelphia to the Philippines, this famous beer is an international favorite. The beer that gives you 33 fine brews in every glass, every time. Taste it. Compare it. See why millions have settled down to blended, splendid Pabst Blue Ribbon Beer. And now for the conclusion of tonight's Thin Man Adventure. Myra was wonderful as Lady Chattelethorpe. Didn't you think so, Nicky? Mm hmm. I'm glad she got that contract from Floyd Presnay. She really played that part much better than I could have. Oh, no, I wouldn't say that, baby. You would have been great in it. You didn't think so this afternoon. I think so now, dear. Oh, yes, when it's safe. Well, Nora, I must confess, what worried me this afternoon was that you might have become a great star and you'd never have time to bother me or drive me crazy. You really mean that, Nicky? <laughs> yes, Nora. Well, that's why I gave up my career, darling. I think you're much sweeter than a mink-lined swimming pool. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. And Nicky. Yes, dear. Nora, what's the matter? What's wrong? I just wanted to show you I could do that scream properly. Oh! <laughs> That's <laughs> wonderful, Nora. The world lost another Helen Hayes in you. I know it, my dear. I know it. But it's no more than any wife can do. You mean every wife is a great actress? She has to be, darling. And no professional acting in front of an audience could even touch the performances the average wife puts on for her husband. You've got something there, dear. Uh, by the way, uh, how'd you like me tonight? Frankly, dear. Uh, frankly? Frankly, you're a great detective. Oh, yeah? Well, I'll have you know that Floyd Presnay was deeply touched by my interpretation of the role of Colonel Biscay Rendango. Touched where? In the head? He wants me to go to Hollywood. What are they looking for? A new Boris Koloff? <laughs> you don't seem to realize what a talented man you're married to. Oh, yes, I do, Nick. Uh, are you going to take the offer? No, baby. I'm giving up acting for the same reason you did. You're lovelier than sable underwear. Why, thank you, Nicky. You know, dear, I don't think Lunt and Fontaine can throw as beautiful baloney to each other as we do. <laughs> Here's your Oscar. Good night, Nicky, darling. <laughs> Be sure to listen next Tuesday night when Pamp's Blue Ribbon Beer brings you another happy, merry, thin man adventure starring Les Tremaine and Claudia Morgan. 
Next week, the adventure of the multiple marriage. When Nick and Nora acquire a daughter and discover that it's easier to stay married than to marry someone else. The Adventures of the Thin Man is brought to you by the Pamps Brewing Company of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Newark, New Jersey, and Peoria, Illinois. And this is Ed Hurley. He's saying goodnight with the best wishes of Pamps Blue Ribbon dealers from coast to coast. Friends, every half hour, three people are stricken with tuberculosis. Yes, that's the deadly menace of TB. One victim every ten minutes. Fifty thousand victims each year. The lives lost through tuberculosis can be saved. The disease is curable. To stop contagion, those ill with TB must be found and treated. The sooner TB is detected, the quicker and easier the cure. Protect your health and your family's health. Have your chest x-rayed today. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Welcome back. Well, this was one of the uh, funniest shows we played here. However, there wasn't a whole lot of mystery to it. And shortly after the show, they would get, after this particular episode, they would begin to integrate more mystery and abandon the process of moving away from the actual detective stories. But still, the title of the show is Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. And Nick Charles, uh, clearly a great detective. Well, good news is we'll be back to uh, more normal detective stories next week when we begin our next series, The Adventures of the Abbots. That is coming one week from today, and I think you're going to really enjoy it. Well, I do have some listener comments to get to. Uh, I can't, uh, this comes from Wesley, who uh, writes in, I can't say enough. Uh, of how much I enjoy your podcast. My grandmother just recently turned 99, and I had her listen to The Thin Man to see if it brought back any memories. She loved it, but said it doesn't bring back any memories. She remembers the early 30s like it was yesterday, and during World War II, she's a bit forgetful. Anyhow, when I listen to old-time radio, I try and picture myself living during the time the episode was broadcast. Thank you so much for what you do to bring old-time radio to new generations. Well, thank you so much, Wesley. And that'll do it for now from uh, Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.